Yes, yes, y'all. This is your host, Neil Retella, back with another live TikTok video. Good morning, everyone. As your brothers and sisters are coming into the live chat room, welcome. This morning's video is going to be called Dreams, Visions, and Spirits. Yes, this is a very interesting topic. Lord wants me to talk about it. I made sure I confirmed with him before coming on here because I was kind of unsure about the topic, but I had to make sure. I definitely have some testimonials and things I want to discuss with you today in this video. If you guys have any questions pertaining to dreams and visions and dealing with unclean spirits, we're going to discuss this in this video this morning. So please be respectful in the chat room. If you have a question, understand that we have an order and how we do things here. So when I open the floor for questions, that's when I will answer your questions. But for now, we're going to go straight to scripture. We're going to read Job chapter 33, verses 14 to 18. Moderators, if you're in the chat room, I need you to put a one in the chat room. If you guys are in the chat room, any moderators, I just want to make sure that everything is in order. Um, before we get this video started, let's bow our heads and pray. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to congregate this morning. Father God, I pray that your will be done in this situation. Allow your will to be done through this video and through your messenger. Father God, I pray that those who are coming into the chat room receive this message in spirit and truth. Father God, that you will open their ears and open their hearts to receive this word today. I decree and declare it in Jesus' name. Amen. Put an amen in the chat room, brothers and sisters. You have received the prayer. Let's go to Job chapter 33. Our moderators, if you're in the chat room, I need you to put a one in the chat and put this in the chat room. Job chapter 33, verses 14 to 18. Or anybody else who's in the chat room, you could put Job chapter 33, verses 14 to 18. All right. And um, we're going to go through each scripture and I'm going to break it down for you. So for those who want to know how to interpret their dreams, those who have a hard time understanding their visions, I want to break it down from a biblical understanding because a lot of people are being led astray when it comes to dreams. And it's a it's a very gray area. And the reason why I say this is because not everybody that comes and tell you that they're spiritual doesn't mean they walk with God. Somebody can say I'm spiritual doesn't mean they walk with God. The real question you need to ask people before you get into all this spiritual talk you need to know what's their religion. You need to know what's their beliefs. Because a lot of people are being led astray because they like information. I realize in these end times, a lot of people are led astray by the influx of information. TikTok especially. I like I see a lot of you guys on TikTok posting a lot of information. It's a lot of information, but it's about the source. It's not about how accurate the information is. I think a lot of people get caught up in the accuracy Instead of the source. So what we're going to talk about is the source of where you get your information from. So let's go to Job chapter 33. Let's start in verse 14 and work our way down to 18. It says, For God speak it once, yea, twice, yet a man perceive it not. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when the deep sleep falleth upon men, in the slumberings upon the bed, then he opens the ears of men and sealeth their instruction. That he may withdraw men from his purpose and high pride for man. He keepeth back its soul, his soul from the pit, and his life from the perishing by the sword. Alright? So let's look at verse 14 one more time. This is the purpose of why you get dreams. So people don't understand why they get dreams or get visions. This is the reason. So let's read Job chapter 33 verse 14 to 18 again. It says, For God speak it once. Yea, twice, yet man perceive it not. Why is this important? Because man do not have the capability of understanding the voice of God because they have fallen from grace. When Adam and Eve was in the garden and had direct communication with God, the minute that Adam disobeyed God, they, they lost that communication over a period of time. It didn't happen overnight, but you started noticing the health started to decrease because in that time, around Adam's time, people were living almost to a thousand years old. People were living for very long. And then after the flood, you started noticing, if you look at the genealogy, 
people weren't living that long. Now people are, you lucky if you live to see 100 years old. <laughs> you lucky to see 100 years old. People are dying very young. And why is that? Because of sin. So God speaks to you all the time. I need, to, I need you guys and ladies to understand. For a lot of people who say that they don't hear from God, they're not able to receive from God. Let's read that again. Verse 14. God speak it once, yea, twice, yet a man perceive it not, because your understanding is not opened. Let's read. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in the slumberings upon the bed. So one of the ways how God can speak to you, yes, he could use a prophet, he could use a pastor, he could use me or anybody else on here, right? But he also talks to you individually. He doesn't need to use us. We're just one of the tools or the vessels that he uses to communicate with you, especially if you're not having a personal relationship with God, especially if you're walking in the opposite direction of God. You guys can check out my videos on TikTok if you're new to the page. There's a video that I post up called The Degrees of Repentance. You guys need to check that video out, especially those who are not saved. It explains a lot about getting salvation and how to walk with God. Very good video. You guys should check that out when you guys get a chance. But let's continue. It says, In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in the slumberings upon the bed, verse 16, then he opened the ears of men and sealed their instructions. So a lot of times when God is speaking to you guys, he's speaking to you in your visions. Now, let's get this clear. Not every dream comes from God. So how do you know if a dream is coming from God or not, right? It is not more about the accuracy of the dream, but the source of where it comes from. And not only that, anytime that you get a dream from God, it always lines up with his character, who he is, and it lines up with his word. So make sure if you're having dreams to line it up with the scriptures, make sure that it lines up with who Jesus said that he is. Make sure that it lines up with scripture. Now, the enemy can attack you in your dreams. The enemy, just like God is sealing the instructions of men in a dream, the enemy comes to sow tears in the field. There's a scripture in the Bible in the New Testament that says that Satan, while men slept, the enemy sowed tears in the field and he went his way. What do you think that means? That Satan can program your mind through your dreams. When you, have got, when you guys experience sleep paralysis at night, and you could put a one in the chat, brothers and sisters, if you have ever experienced sleep paralysis in your dreams where you are laying in your bed, you're wide awake, but you can't move your body at all. So if you ever had that experience, you could put a one in the chat. I'll explain to you in more details what that is. So the enemy can attack you through sleep paralysis, attack you through wet dreams. So if you have any type of sex in your dreams, that's another way how the enemy attacks you. Eating food in the dream. You're not supposed to be eating food in the dream. So if you notice, if you eat food in the dream, you need to understand where that comes from. There's scriptures for that too. I'm going to drop that later on. Nightmares. Of course, that's demonic. But not every dream that's horrible or you might think is nightmarish comes from the devil. If you have a dream of going to hell, that might not be coming from the devil. It's coming from God. It may be a warning for you to repent from your not. From your sins. So you may have dreams of you going to hell. You may have dreams of you being in a rapture. I'm pretty sure some of you guys had rapture dreams. Pretty sure some of you guys had tribulation dreams with the Antichrist. I've had plenty of those. So when you have certain type of dreams, they represent certain things that God is trying to reveal to you and trying to get your attention. So a lot of dreams you might think is good dreams, but they're not from God. Then there's certain dreams that are bad dreams, but they are from God. But it is a warning to you to repent from whatever lifestyles that you're living in. So put a one in the chat, brothers and sisters, if you understand the assignment. So when he says in verse 16, then he opened the ears of men and sealed the instruction, meaning all the content within the dream is the instructions. So how do you unravel the instructions? You have to interpret the dream. So you need a dream interpreter, right? So this is where gifts comes in. Not everybody can interpret dreams. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm keeping a buck with you. It's a gift from God. 
And you have to ask the Holy Spirit to reveal those things to you. So if you have a dream, you don't know what it means. Instead of you running to the next, running on the internet, going on these websites, trying to look up the meaning of a dream. Ask the Holy Spirit. God, I don't understand what I just dreamt last night. I, I saw this happening. I saw me flying in the dream. What does that mean? And wait until God reveals that to you. Now, however God chooses to reveal that to you, that's up to him. You can't control God. God could choose to use me to reveal it to you or somebody else who may have the gift of interpretation to reveal the dream to you. Or he might just come to you himself and reveal it to you. Or he could wait as long as he wants. You know, you know how many times I've had dreams? I've dreams years ago. I had dreams that I had like at least five years ago that I'm only now getting the interpretation of that dream. Let me repeat that one more time. I had dreams that I had five years ago and I'm only now getting the, I'm only now getting that revelation or that interpretation of that dream. So God reveals the dreams to you or the messages or the instructions within the dream. When is the appropriate time for you to get it? He doesn't reveal it to you just because you ask. It's nice for you to ask and I suggest that you do ask, but understand, be patient i give you biblical examples. Remember Daniel? Daniel had, he was able to interpret people's dreams. And it was one specific dream where he was trying to get the interpretation of. And he had to fast and pray for 21 days. You remember that story? Some of you guys probably read that story. Where Daniel had to pray and fast for 21 days. And the angel had the message already. But he had to deal with all the spiritual warfare with the Prince of Persia, which is a principality, right? So the angel Michael had to fight with this angel or the principality of, of Persia for 21 days. So think about it. Daniel was fasting and praying in order to get an answer from God. A lot of you guys, you are, you are into this fast food spirituality and this is what I want to talk about in this video. Stop having that mindset. I used to be there too. Before I, before I turned my life to Christ and started walking with God, I used to be a part of the occult. I used to practice witchcraft, santeria, all of that. And guess what? What does it profit a man to gain the whole world but lose your soul? I'm telling you, you guys play with tarot cards. You're going to psychics and mediums. The Bible warns about that. You're opening a door that you can't close. That's why a lot of times when you guys experience this sleep paralysis, having sex in your dreams... Demons are tormenting you in your dreams. You experiencing sicknesses and illnesses in your family bloodline. Yeah, that's because you opened the door. And I'm pretty sure some of you guys that's watching this video right now are, are resonating with what I'm saying. You probably, even if you didn't play with the witchcraft, maybe a family member, a family member opened that door to that occult. I'm not letting nobody join in the chat room. You can watch if you have any questions, my friend. Please leave it in the chat room, but I'm not opening the door for that. I'm just trying to get this done because this is important. So says verse 17, it says, and he may withdraw men from his purpose and hide pride for man. So what is the purpose of dream? Why would God give you a dream to either warn you of judgment or impending doom or to warn his people? So let's say let's go back to this, this situation where we talked about. Dreams of hell. If you have a dream of going to hell, that is a warning from God to you. Either to change certain things that you're doing in your life because you're going down a wrong path. So God is warning you in the dream because he's trying to get your attention through prophets and teachers and people who's preaching the word. So you're ignoring the word. You're like, I don't want to hear nothing about God. God ain't real. So guess what? God is going to show you that he is real. And he's giving you dreams to show you that where you're going is not a good place. You need to turn around. You need to turn back. You need to make that 180. So he gives you dreams to either warn you or to inform you of promises that he has for your life or your calling. So a lot of people always ask him what's their calling in life. Well, how are you going to know what's your calling if you don't understand your visions? It is God that gives you visions. It is God that reveals to you what it is that you need to do. Or he can use a prophet or somebody who's in the body of Christ to reveal to you aspects of your life. 
That's why it's so important that you have a personal relationship with God. And I advise anybody who is not saved to get a relationship with God. I don't need to go to nobody else to ask me, ask them, yo, what's my dreams? What do you think my dreams mean? I remember when I first started, yeah, I used to ask people, what do you think that mean? I used to go on the internet, used to go on these websites, looking up the meaning of the dream. And the Holy Spirit convicted me one day and said, Neil, stop looking up the meaning of these dreams. Every time you're looking up the meaning, you're opening the door to the spirit of divination. If you want an interpretation of your dreams, you need to come to me. So now I've been doing that. And I've been doing that for a couple years now. And I've noticed the minute I stopped going and look up the meaning of something because I wanted to know. Right. I was so I was so into the spiritual stuff like that. But when I started trusting in God and to say, OK, God. You know the meaning of the dream. You know the interpretation. Obviously, it was given to me for a reason. God, I ask that you reveal to me the dream and the interpretation of the dream in the time that you want it to be revealed to me. And God has been revealing to me a lot of stuff. That's why my knowledge and my wisdom increased throughout the years. The more times I've experienced certain things in the dreams, spiritual attacks in the dreams, all of that. I've noticed that my discernment went up. So when you start asking God for the gift of discernment, so this is what you could pray to God for. If you don't know what your dreams are, you don't know what's being said in your dreams, you don't know what it means, stop looking up the meaning of the dream. Stop going to these psychics and mediums to find it out. You're going to defile your spirit. I'm warning you. I've been there before. I'm telling you, I used to deal with witches. Leave that stuff alone. You want to you wanna have a spiritual experience? You want to have a spiritual reality? You want to experience spiritual things? You can only get that through Christ. Christ, is, he knows all things. I wouldn't go to somebody that knows half truth. I'm going to go to somebody who knows all things. It says the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth, will guide and lead you into all the truth. Not some of the truth. Not just stuff pertaining to the Bible. Things outside of the Bible. So if I want to know something that's outside of the Bible... I'm going to go to the Holy Spirit. Why? Because he knows the ins and outs of things. You're going to go to a psychic and medium and get your spirit defiled and open up a door to a demon because you're just spiritually hungry and you're spiritually thirsty and you don't even know who you're talking to. You're looking at a person like, oh, this person looks like they're spiritual. They look like they know something. You don't have discernment. The only way you could get discernment is through the Holy Spirit. That's why I'm telling you guys, you need to give your life to Christ. Stop trying to seek alternative spiritualities. Yoga, New Age, uh, Muslims, Buddhists, all of that is alternative religions. There's only one truth, Jesus Christ. And I don't care who gets mad in the chat room. I'm telling you that because I already tried the Buddhist stuff. I'm telling you that because I tried the Hebrew Israelite stuff. I'm telling you that because I tried the conscious community stuff. I didn't get nowhere but back to square one. It was something about this book that always caught my attention as much as I hated Christians. Because I'm telling you, I'm being very transparent in this video. When I was not a Christian at the time, I used to do witchcraft on Christians. I'm just being real with y'all. So as much as y'all might hate Christians, for those who are not saved, I know how you feel because I was once there too. And guess what? When God really showed me who he was... It wasn't based on me going to church. It wasn't based on me trying to go because my parents were going to church. I used to act up in church. So you ain't telling me nothing new. When I had a near-death experience at the age of 20, when I overdosed on drugs, and I left my body, that was the starting of my journey. I had two near-death experiences in my life. One at the age of 20, and the other one, Last year, when I had COVID-19, when I had COVID-19, I had a net death experience. That was, I think that was the pinnacle of experiences I had, right? And I have testimonials on here so you guys could check out more about that story if y'all are interested in hearing that story. I have written books on it so you guys can go check that out at www.footworkministries.com, right? They're all free to read and download, so enjoy yourself. All right, but I'm not going to sugarcoat anything for you. I've been on that other side. I know some of you guys thinking like, oh, yeah, Christianity sucks. Oh, your Jesus is not real. 
you don't know if Jesus is real unless you have an experience. That's like if I'm not a crackhead. Give me an example. I'm not a crackhead. I'm talking to a crackhead that did crack. This person is telling me that did crack. Say, hey, Neil, you don't want to play with that. Look at how it messed me up. I'm looking at this person's life. I'm looking at their teeth. I'm looking at their body. I'm looking at all of that. But I'm like, yeah, I want to try it because I'm just interested in seeing what it is. He's, and this person is giving me wisdom and saying, Neil, you don't want to go down that road. Please don't do it. I rather take the wisdom of that person who's telling me, no, don't do it. I already did it. I'm telling you, it's nothing to play with versus you having the curiosity that all humans have because all humans have that curiosity to try to find out the unknown. You can't tell me it's just because it ain't work for you doesn't mean it's not going to work for me. I mean, do you really got to go through that just to find out if it works for you? Or you could use common sense and say, yo, if this, this messed up this guy's life or this woman's life and they're having enough gall and honesty to tell me not to go down that same path they went down. Do I have to go through that to find it out? But you see, that's the pride. Look at what it says in verse 18. He says, he keep back his soul from the pit and his life from the perishing of the soul. And in verse 17, it says that he may withdraw man from his purpose and hide pride from man. So when God gives you a warning in the dream, it's to hide your pride from you and to make you humble. So if he give you a dream about hell, don't look at it like, oh my gosh, it's coming from the enemy and the, and the devil's a liar. No, that's God warning you. Because you're living a life a lifestyle of lies. And we're going to go into more scriptures so I can give you more details. Because I took in notes. So we started with Job chapter 33 verses 14 to 18. Let's go to Jeremiah chapter 23 verse 32. So let's go to Jeremiah chapter 23. Sorry, got tongue twisters. A few second. Right? So that would be 32. Bam. He says in verse 30, right? It says, therefore, I behold, I am against the prophets, say the Lord, that steal my words, every one from his neighbor. Behold, I am against the prophets, say the Lord, that uses their tongues and say, he say, behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams. Listen to what he said. I am against them that prophesy false dreams. Saith the Lord, and do them, he said, and do tell them false dreams, saith the Lord, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their likeness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore they shall not profit these people at all, say the Lord. So God is against false prophets for this reason. We just explained about psychics and mediums. A lot of you people probably go to church. I deal with deliverance ministries. I deal with the prophetic ministry. You guys deal with claiming and naming. That's that prosperity gospel. I would tell you guys, whoever is in that type of lifestyle and practicing those things in that church, tread lightly. I'm not saying you might not have the gift of prophecy, but make sure that your prophecy is coming from the Holy Spirit. Make sure that that's something that God did tell you to say and not something that you conceived in your mind. Look what the Bible says. It says in verse 32, Behold, I'm against them that prophesy false dreams. You have a spirit. You have the Holy Spirit. Then you have counterfeit spirits. Those are false gods. A psychic and a medium has the gift, just like the prophet has the gift to see into the spirit. You will call them seers, right? And the Bible tells you in, in 1 Samuel calls people who see into the spirit seers, right? You got diviners. This is where you get the word divination from. So what does the word divination mean? It means to deviate from the original purpose. God has created man and woman on the earth for a specific purpose. What is the, what is the spirit of divination's plan to do? Kill, steal, and destroy your destiny, right? So what will be the assignment of the spirit of divination in your life? To give you false dreams and false visions and false hopes, Right? So if you're worshiping other gods outside of Jesus Christ, those are spirits of divination operating in your life to deviate you from the path that Jesus Christ has laid out for you. What is the path that Jesus Christ laid out for you? He said, I am the truth. 
the way and the life. No one could come to the Father but through me. But other religions will say there's many paths to God. No, there's no need paths to God. There's many paths to other gods that ain't the true God. There's only one true God. So if you say, oh, Buddha is the truth. No, he's not the truth because Buddha even talks about he doesn't have all the answers. You go to Muhammad. The Quran still points back to the Bible. The Quran still points back to the Bible. So is it is is the Bible the truth? Because everybody's banning the Bible. The Bible's the truth. Why in celebrity, why in the in the in the music industry in Hollywood, they don't want you saying the name Jesus. Just spoof for thought. Everybody's against that name Jesus. Even the Hebrew Israelites, they'll say, Oh, there's no J's in the in 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 the name Yeshua, we know his Hebrew name is Yeshua. But why are you so hating on the name of Jesus? Why are y'all so against the name? Because you know that that name is every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess his name is Jesus Christ. It says it right here in the Bible. We know that the English has J's in it. And we know that the Hebrew alphabet doesn't have J's in it. But y'all want to be politically correct. And this is what Apostle Paul warned about in the New Testament. He says, look, y'all started off in the spirit, but now you back to the law. You back to the law. That's dead works. God is not concerned about if you call him Yeshua or Jesus Christ. He knows who he is. Do you know who he is? That's my question to you. Whether you call him Yeshua, if it makes you feel more comfortable, it makes you sleep better at night. Or you want to call him Jesus Christ because I know what saved me when I had a near-death experience. It wasn't all these names that y'all coming up with. It was Jesus Christ. I know when I get attacked by demons or I'm in a sleep paralysis, I don't call on Yeshua. I call on Jesus. And he answers my prayer. Demons flee. I literally see that. I just had a sleep paralysis last night just to give, give y'all a heads up. What was the name that I call on? Jesus, how did they respond? They leave. They flee. He says, resist the devil and he shall flee. What did Jesus Christ say to you? He said, I have given you power and authority to tread upon all serpents and scorpions and all over the power of the enemy. What is the name that make demons flee? Jesus. Even the demons know who Jesus is. How, how foolish of you to reject the only sacrifice that can save you. So when you have these false prophets that's telling you, Certain information, listen, this is what makes false teachings and false dreams dangerous. It can have certain accuracy in the dreams. Prophets could preach with certain accuracy, but if their spirit is not right with God, it's still wrong. It's still wrong. And I'm going to show you in the scriptures. Let's go to, um, let's go to, uh, give me a second. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 1 to 3. Let's go to Deuteronomy. I'm going to show you. I'm going to line that up. I'm going to line that scripture up real quick. See, take notes. I want you all to take notes. So, let's see what it says. It says, If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and give it thee a sign or wonder, and if the sign or wonder come to pass, whereof he spoke unto thee, saying, let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you to know whether you love the God with all your heart and with all your soul. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him, and keep his commandments and obey his voice, and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death. This is the Old Testament. If you was out here preaching false prophecy, and we're going to get into that real quick. It says to put that false prophet to death. Why? It says because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage. To thrust thee out of the way which the Lord God has commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put away the evil from the midst of thee. So people who worship other gods. Y'all already walking in error. Those who are false prophets telling you certain truths which are facts. They could tell you facts. 
A, a, a psychic and a medium can tell you something that's true about your family. They can say, oh, yes, you got family. You got a whole bloodline full of diabetics. Oh, my gosh, I can't believe you told me that. They'll tell you something that you never told nobody before. That's how they reel you in. And when you get hooked to what they saying to you because they told you a truth or they told you something about your life that no one else didn't tell you about or you didn't tell nobody else about. But you got to check the source of that spirit. That's the thing that you're not listening to. You're not listening to your inner dialogue. You're not listening to your conscience. You're not listening to the Holy Spirit when you're saying, look, that's not me. That's not my prophet. I didn't send that person. But you ignore that because you're so caught up in the signs and wonders. This is what's wrong with this generation. We want to see signs in order to believe. Faith is not activated like that. Faith is activated by belief, then seeing. Not seeing first, then I have to believe. That is the ways of the world. The world needs a sign. The world needs some type of evidence in order to believe. A Christian don't need to see something in order to believe. We believe because we believe on the promises of Jesus Christ. It says to walk by faith and not by sight. So if you want to walk in the spirit, you have to walk by faith. Because what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Evidence of things not seen. What is the things that are not seen? The spirit realm. The spirit realm is the things that are not seen. What is the seeing? The physical, what you wake up to every single morning, right? So when it says, there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and give it thee a sign or wonder. A sign or wonder. So when the people do all those healings in the church, the deliverance ministries, some of you guys go to those deliverance ministries when they praying for you guys and y'all passing out or y'all jumping and hooting and hollering and there's a whole bunch of confusion in the church. Y'all not even testing the spirit to see if it's from God or not. Y'all just say, oh, it's the Holy Spirit. How do you know that? How do you know that? You see what I'm saying? The Bible said you should know a man by the gifts that he bear. It says you should know a man by the what? Fruits that he bear. Meaning the character, the nature of that tree. Same thing. So let's read verse 2. It says, the sign and wonder comes to pass whether he spoke unto thee. Saying, let us go after other gods. So if that person is leading you away from God, leading you away from the gospel of Jesus Christ, that's a false teacher. That's a false vision. A lot of you guys would be led astray because y'all chasing after money, chasing after women, chasing after men, chasing after praise, chasing after power. You're only chasing after the lust of the flesh, lust of the eye and the pride of life. And this is why you're an easy target. For people who are quote unquote spiritual predators. Y'all are addicted to the y'all addicted to the occult. Y'all are addicted to the spiritual stuff. You want a true, genuine relationship with God, you can only get that through Jesus Christ. Can't get that through me. Can't get that through nobody else. Yes, I'm here to preach the word to you, but at the end of the day, you still gotta make up your mind if you want to choose to walk with God or choose to walk away from God. And everybody in the chat room that got something negative to say. You just exposing your heart because I ain't got nothing to say to you. I didn't ask you for no money. If you choose to support this ministry, that's because you're being led to do that. And God, I didn't put up no cash app in my in my account. I know what you're talking about. But let's keep reading. All right. It says, you shall not hearken on to the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams for the Lord God prove it to you. Meaning he's testing you. Sometimes when certain people come and telling you about their dreams or telling you about a dream or telling you about yourself. That is an opportunity that God is testing you to see if you're really walking with God or you're not. So how do I deal with people that's always telling me, yo, God told me this and God told me that. I'm like, yeah, I didn't hear that. I don't know what God you're talking about because I got a relationship with God. Anything he need to tell me, he's going to tell me up front. I'm not saying he can't use you or anybody else to tell me what I got to do because I'm not going to control God. I don't control God. Right. But at the end of the day. If my relationship is that tight with God, I don't need to go outside of the Bible to get a word. And this is why I'm trying to tell you, brothers and sisters on here. You guys are trying to go outside of the gospel to get a word for your life. When well, you could just read your word first thing you do when you get up in the morning. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. It says those who are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. Let me say that one more time. 
those who are led by the Spirit. So if you know you don't even know how to hear the voice of God, how are you how are you being led by the Holy Spirit? You're being led by your flesh. You people who keep asking this, oh, you got a word from God? Hey, man, I don't know how to reinterpret my dreams. That's because you're not hearing from God. Because if you was hearing from God, you wouldn't have to ask me about that. But the simple fact that you're asking about that means you don't know. And that's okay. I'm not getting at you for that. I just want you to know where you stand. Because I don't go on people's lives and say, hey, man, can you interpret this dream for me? God is interpreting the dream for me while I speak, while I ask. And that's because I develop a relationship with God. That's because I chose to develop a relationship with God. You walking with God is a personal decision. You choosing to go to a pastor and have him pastor your life is a personal decision. But your past is not responsible for your life. You are. Not your pastor. Y'all will give all this credibility to some man that can't even do for himself. And I'm trying to save y'all the trouble. Because a lot of you guys are going to fall away in these end times because y'all are being led astray by deliverance ministries. Not saying deliverance is, is wrong or false. I'm saying the people who you're going to are false. And you will know them by the fruits that they bear. Listen to what I said. I say deliverance is not false. I've done deliverance on people. I have done deliverance on myself. I went through deliverance. So I know what I'm talking about. People who is telling you to, to pay for profit school. Where is that in the Bible? Tell me anybody who is a prophet in this Bible had to go to profit school in order to be a prophet. Or those prophets were homes taught by Jesus Christ himself. Moses, did he have to go to prophet school or he was taught by Jesus Christ? Aaron, same thing. Elijah, Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, Abednego. Who determines who's a prophet is? Jesus. God knows who is his and who's not. If you're not a prophet, if you're not rolling with God, you're not a prophet of God. You are a prophet, but you're a prophet of the devil because you want to profit your pockets. We're called to preach this gospel freely. If somebody gives a donation, that's because they chose to give a donation. That's totally up to that individual. But I was told specifically by the Lord himself not to charge people for no consultations, not to charge people for no type of deliverance, none of that. Because when I used to be in the world, I used to do that. When I was in the occult, I used to charge people for consultations. And God checked me about that. So I'm just being real transparent with you guys and telling you, yeah, God already checked me about that. So you ain't telling me nothing new. So I'm telling you, if you choose to give to this don't give to this ministry, that's totally up to you. But I'm not asking you. If anything, take that same money you have in your pocket and go pay your landlord. You got rent due. Go take care of your kids. How about that? Go go give to the homeless. Stop giving to these pimps in the pulpit. Stop giving to these pimps in the pulpit. You give your whole life savings. To a guy in the pulpit because he promised you you'll get your, your husband or wife by the end of the week. Oh, if you sow a, if you sow a seed in my ministry, you'll get your soulmate because you're so lonely. You're so lonely, you will, you will buy into any lie. That's the problem that I'm pointing out in this video. I'm pointing out your problem, not pointing out a solution. The solution is Christ. I'm pointing to Christ. I'm not pointing to me. I'm not the solution. I don't have all your answers. I don't know you. I'm pointing you to scripture. It says anybody who is a false teacher should be put to death. If this was still the Old Testament, a lot of you guys would be put to death. You think that the God of the Old Testament is not the God of the New Testament. They're two sides of the same coin. Choose what side you want. <laughs> you want the wrath of God or you want the grace of God? Y'all abuse the grace of God. And then when we correct you on here, y'all saying, oh, yeah. Only God could judge me. You don't want God judging you because you're going to have to deal with that on judgment day. You're going to have to keep an account for everything you said and everything you did. You're being warned. I don't need your money to warn you. I'm just going to warn you. And I know most people on this chat room is not going to agree with the message anyway. I don't come on here to get fans and your, your friendship. I don't want your friendship. I want you to give your life to Christ. That's all I care about. 
I care about preaching the word of God. Come on here and do what I got to do. Let's go to the next chapter. Let's read uh, verses. Let's read Numbers 12, verse 6. Let's go to the um, book of Numbers, chapter 12. Let's see what they got to say. Says, ba, ba, ba. there we go. It says, and he said, hear now my words. If they be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and I will speak to him in a dream. Let me say that one more time for those who are Christians and they're looking into the prophetic ministry. So let me help you out. Verse 6 of Numbers 12. You can put this in the chat room, moderators. Put Numbers chapter 12, verse 6, and pin that in the chat room. Thank you. It says, and he said, hear now my words. If they be a prophet among you, I, the Lord, will make myself known unto him in a vision, and I will speak to him in a dream. Simple as that. So God speaks to you in your dreams. A lot of you guys know that God speaks to you in your dreams. Some of you guys might not be aware that God is speaking to you in your dreams. And for those who don't know that God is speaking to you in your dreams, I'm here to remind you that he is. The only difference is that you don't understand what he's saying to you. So this is what this video is here to do. Help you understand what you don't understand. Because if you had a relationship with God and you spent time in your Bible and reading, you will, the Holy Spirit will start to reveal things to you. That's how he talks to you. He reveals. He says, no man can come to the Father unless I draw him. So if you're not drawn to this message... You're not convicted by this message. That means God is not talking to you. You say, I wake up with no recollection of any dreams. Well, sister, let me ask you a question. Are you a Christian? Put a one in the chat if it's a yes and put a two in the chat if it's no. Most people, even Christians may not even, okay, cool. Well, let me explain something to you. Most people will not remember their dreams because God is the one who reveals the dreams to people, right? And God is the one who has to open up your understanding. Put a one in the chat, brothers and sisters, if you understand this. God has to reveal things to you based on the visions you have. God has to open up your understanding. If God does not open up your understanding, you will never understand. That's why he sends pastors, preachers, prophets, evangelists, people such as myself to help you understand. But if you're going to resist the help that you're getting, that's a foolish move. That's foolish. Why well, sit here and watch me preach on here and disagree with the message when it, when you were led or you were drawn by the spirit to this message? I didn't I don't know you guys. There's a reason why you're being drawn to this message. So it's imperative that you will listen to this message. Throw out everything that you think that you know. You guys are going for the head knowledge. God is not in your head knowledge. God is in your heart. Is either you have him in your heart or you don't. Is either that word is rooted in you or it's not. The more you yield to Christ, meaning you surrender to Christ, the more he will reveal to you. The more you resist Christ, the more he's going to withdraw from you. That's why the Bible says he resisted the pride or the proud. It says pride before the fall. A lot of you guys celebrated Pride Month in June. Think about it. That's a, a month that God detests. And you're the same people that say, oh, we're, we're, you're, you're children of God. No, you're not. You serve the God of this world who is Satan. And who is Satan? Satan is the God of this age. Satan is the God of this world who blinds the minds of who? Unbelievers. Those who say they don't believe in Jesus. If you don't believe in Jesus, you're not a child of God. It's simple as that. If you're not born again of the water of the Spirit, you don't have the Holy Spirit, you're not a child of God. I know it's hard for you to accept that because you've been lied to in church. Half of the people that go to church are not even Christians. They don't even live sanctified lives. They don't. That's why people have a hard time believing in Christians because they see a whole bunch of hypocrites in the church that's supposed to be quote unquote Christians but still live like the world. He said, you will know a tree by the fruit that it bears. He ain't saying you'll know a person by the title that they carry. That's why I don't have a title. Don't call me your pastor. I'm not your pastor. I'm your brother in Christ. I'm just giving you game. Take it or leave it. 
Y'all will y'all quick to put a title on a person and say, hey, you're a man of God. And if I do something that goes against the word of God, y'all will be quick to say, oh, you a hypocrite. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to be myself on here. I'm going to preach the word of God. I'm going to give you my testimonial and book it. You do what you got to do. But don't put me in no pedestal. Don't put me on no, no stance like I'm this guy. I'm this like you should be putting God on a pedestal, not man. Because the minute you put another person on a pedestal other than Jesus Christ, you are doing idolatry. If you put your kids before God, it's idolatry. You put your husband before God, that's idolatry. You put your wife before God, that's idolatry. Y'all put your needs before God, that's idolatry. He said, do not make any graven images up above, down below, in the sea, on the earth, wherever. So I'm just helping you guys out. This is the reason why some of you guys are not hearing from God. Because y'all have a whole bunch of idols in your heart that's preventing you from hearing the voice of God. What did Jesus Christ say in his word? The word does not contradict God, nor the word, nor, nor does God contradict his word. His word is his word. He said that the heaven and the earth will pass away, but my word will remain the same. So if you're putting, you say you've been letting your boyfriend be an idol. Well, that's why you're not hearing from God. If you're not married, you shouldn't be in no relationship. That's just my honest opinion. I'm not here to go into your personal life. But if, you, if, you can, if you're convicted by what I just said, then you got to take it up with the Lord and tell him how to get about that situation. You have two options. You either get married to that brother and y'all be husband and wife and seal the deal or y'all leave. Because God, God, you're not going to be serving two masters. You're going to love one or hate the other. And if your boyfriend is not a man of God, you have no business dealing with him. I'm going to be a front and be honest with you. Any one of you guys in relationships with people who are unequally yoked with you. I'm not saying if it's true or not. I'm just putting it out there. You said we're trying to marry, but he's too worried about rings. Well, y'all need to stop hooking up until y'all get y'all personal life together with God. That's just my take. I'm not going to get into too much relationship advice because this is not about relationship advice. We're talking about dreams. But take, take that information, sister, and run with that. But uh, like I said, you brothers and sisters focus too much on the, the, carnal, the carnal realm and the things of this world. When you give your life to Christ, you give your life to Christ. Not not joking about that. Like when I gave my life to Christ it, at the age of 20, it didn't happen overnight. I was still in fornication. I was still out there smoking weed. I was still out there doing the worldly things until God arrested me. And I had to let go of these things one by one. Was it easy? Absolutely not. You know which people I had to cut off? I had to cut off family members. I had to cut off friends girlfriends, all of that. So, trust and believe. Where I'm at right now, I still got more ways to go, but I know I'm in a way better place than where I was before when I was very lukewarm. So, I just let God guide my steps every single day. The things that I could do, He give me the grace to do it. The things I don't have the grace to do, I ask for the grace. I ask the Holy Spirit to help me get through the situations that I have a hard time overcoming. It's very simple, but let's go to um, Daniel. No, no, let's go to Daniel. Let's go to First Samuel chapter twenty-eight, verse fifteen. So let's go to First Samuel. Let's see what we got, because there's a scripture in there I want to show you guys. So that's twenty-eight. This has to do with Saul. I'm gonna show you guys something. I'm gonna underline it too. There we go. So it says, there we go. It says, and Samuel said to Saul, why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered and said, I am so distressed for the Philistines make war against me and God is departed from me and answer me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore, I have called thee that thou mayest made me known unto me what I should do. I'm going to read that one more time. Sorry for the tongue twisters. The situation is Saul is consulted a psychic and medium. More, to be more precise, 
and necromancer. The Bible's against necromancy. Consulting dead ancestors, consulting the dead. That's what necromancy is. So God departed from Saul because he took the kingdom for, away from Saul for Saul being disobedient towards God, not listening to God. So one way you can stop hearing from God is being disobedient to God. So you guys need to repent if you're being disobedient to God. You want to hear God's voice, but you're living in disobedience. You're living in willful sin. Turn away from your sins. Give your heart to God. Give your life to God. Right? So Saul is trying to get answers from God because God is not hearing. God is not giving him visions anymore. He's not sending any prophets to him anymore. So he's like, I got to go to a necromancy. I got to go do necromancer, right? And guess what? He's doing the same thing that God detests. He's doing the same thing that God tells Israel not to do. A lot of you guys, y'all think y'all pleasing God by doing the things that God tells you not to do. And it's like, oh, I'm not hearing from God. So I went to go get a tarot card reading. I ain't hearing from God. So I went and got, um, I went to a psychic medium, got my palms read. I'm not hearing from God, so, you know, I went and played with a Ouija board. Feel what I'm saying? This is what Saul did. And a lot of you guys could uh, relate to Saul. God ain't talking to you because you're being disobedient. God ain't talking to you because every time he knocks on your door of your heart, you keep resisting him with pride. Every time God sent his prophets to you, you turn them away. You feel what I'm saying? Like some of you guys in the chat room. If God's talking to you through his prophets and his teachers, y'all laughing in the chat room. Y'all saying, oh, God is not real. God is not true. Well, guess what? That's why you're not hearing from God. And then you want to come to guys like me. Oh, tell me about my dreams. I'm not telling you nothing. I'm going to tell you what you need to do. Go back to your first love. Go back and repent. You want to an answer to your problem? Go back and repent. Get rid of them accursed items in your house. Stop playing around. Stop playing with sin. Y'all want to hear about your future. Oh, tell me who I'm going to marry in the future. Tell me who's my soulmate. No, you could have went to God for that. But since you don't want to wait on God, you want to go to other gods. A lot of you guys are going to fall away because of the same thing that Saul did. You're impatient. You don't want to wait till God reveals things to you. You want to do it on your own time. You want to take matters into your own hand. But keep doing that. It says stubbornness is like idolatry and rebellion is as witchcraft. So rebellion is on the same level as witchcraft. Everybody who have ever done rebel, everybody who's ever done witchcraft are rebellious. They are rebellious by nature. Why? Because they're rebelling against the ordinance of God. They want to be their own God. When I was in witchcraft, I wanted to be my own God. I'm not going to sugarcoat it with you. Why do you think I was studying all of that? I was doing ancestor worship, pouring libations for ancestors, saying all these weird names and all that stuff, dressed all with crystals and unks and all that. You ain't telling me nothing new, but there's only one true God. I was being deceived. And I'm not ashamed to say this on here. I was deceived. Because the truth was staring me in my face the whole time. This Bible is very old. <laughs> I had this Bible since I got saved. You see what I'm saying? You say you're too high for this? Well, you shouldn't come on here. Because you're definitely in the wrong spirit, my friend. You smoking weed is inviting spirits. They don't want you to hear that. They don't want you to hear the word of God. You see what I'm saying? Like, you cannot stand in the presence of God when you're in another spirit. You're going to get upset. You're going to feel offended. I'm letting you know that right now. Anybody who's coming in the wrong spirit... When we talk about the word of God, it's going to offend you. It's nothing, there's nothing deep about that. Can, dark, can light walk with darkness? No, they cannot. Can light fellowship with darkness? No, they cannot. But y'all guys will try to mix light and dark. When you're in the conscious community and doing all those spiritualities, y'all will say, oh, we're both light and dark. We can mix the demonic with the occult and we can mix Christianity with everything. No, you cannot. This is separate and set apart for a reason. When he calls you out of the world, he says, do not conform to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Do not mix yourself with the idols. That's why you're lukewarm. 
because you're mixing with the world. You're mixing with the culture. You're mixing with the customs. You're mixing with the ideologies, the belief system. You cannot take pieces of the Bible and mix it with other religions. You're creating a whole nother religion. Why do you think you got Rastafari? You got all these different other sects in Christianity because you're taking scriptures, the scriptures that stand out to you, you, you're picking apart this book and making a whole nother religion based on your own ideology. There's only one truth, Jesus Christ. He ain't talk about all these denominations. He said, be holy as I am holy. Why? Because the nature of God is holiness. And no man can see the Father unless he's holy. And the only way you could be holy is through Jesus Christ because you can't be holy on your own. So Christianity is a different section of our spirituality altogether. It's nothing like Buddhism. It's nothing like Judaism. It's nothing like the Hebrew Israelite movement. It's nothing like the conscious community. It's nothing like Santeria. It's a different class of its own. It's not even like Catholics because the Catholics worship the saints. You're not even supposed to be worshiping Mary. That's, that's idolatry. Come on, people. And then y'all get mad when we preaching the gospel. Well, you're mad because your idols are being exposed. Whatever you love is being exposed. Whatever you are fighting so hard against, the truth for. Let me say that one more time. This is how you know you have an idol in your heart. When the word of God is being preached to you and you're getting offended and you're trying to defend what it is that we're talking against. Anytime you defend anything that, you're, that we're talking against in the gospel, that means you have made it an idol. That's the thing you need to let go of. So if I'm talking against your relationship, but you have made your boyfriend and girlfriend an idol before God, you're going to say, stop talking about my boyfriend. Stop talking about my girlfriend. They're not evil. What are you talking about? We can do whatever we want. Yeah, because you believe in that lie. Yeah, because you believe in that. You see what I'm saying? So whatever we preach in this gospel and you're upset, you're upset at the message, that's because there's an idol there blocking you from receiving the truth. You said, Sky Daddy is funny to me because that's really what my father is, Sky. You got to get more detail with that, friend, because I don't know what you're saying in the chat room. <clears throat> so you got to kind of drop that, be more clear about that. All right. Um, let's go to Isaiah 29, verse 8. Let's see what Isaiah 29, verse 8 got to say. Give me a second. There we go. It says, and it shall be even as when we say that one more time. It's actually started verse 7. It says, and the multitudes of all the nations that fight against Ariel, even all that fight against her and her mutations and that distresses her shall be as a dream of a night vision. Verse eight, it says, it shall even be as when a hungry man dream it and behold, he eat it. But when he awake it, his soul is empty or as a thirsty man dream it and behold, he drink it. But when he awake it, behold, he is faint. And his soul has appetite. So shall the multitudes of all the nations be that fight against Mount Zion. What we can get from chapter verse 8 is when he's talking about the eating and the drinking and the dream. So that's what I want to talk about. When it says a, a man that's hungry dreaming and he's eating in the dream, he still wakes up and he still has that appetite. Because your spiritual hunger is not the same thing as your physical hunger. If you're, if you're hungry in your physical body... What do you do when you, go, when you get hungry? You go to the kitchen, you go to the refrigerator, get something to eat. Or you go to Grubhub, order some food, or you go outside and get something to eat. Thank you for muting that person, whoever that was. All right. Um, same thing with drinking. So the, what is the purpose of eating and drinking in your dream? When you're eating and drinking in your dream, it's your soul speaking to you. See, you have dreams from God. You can have dreams from your spirit. Meaning your soul, and you have dreams from the from the evil one, which is the devil. So when God gives you a vision, is either to remind you of his promises or to warn you about judgment and hell fire. If you have a dream from your soul, it's to fulfill the unsatisfied desires of your heart. So if you're eating in the dream, having sex in the dream, or you're drinking in the dream, it's soulish desires. 
because your spirit don't need to eat and your spirit don't need to drink food or, or eat water. You know what I'm trying to say. Say eat water. Drink water and eat food, right? So when you wake up, when you have these type of soulish dreams, you start to develop the appetite to want to go and eat. If you have sex in a dream, you will wake up feeling horny and then you want to have sex. So the enemy uses soulish dreams to keep you bound to sin. So like let's say, for instance, spirit spouses. A spirit spouse is a spirit that has sex with you in a dream. They make covenants with you in the dream. So how could a spirit make covenant with you in the dream? They make covenants with you in the dream through sex, eating the food or drinking. So if you ever see yourself eating in the dream or drinking in the dream or having sex in the dream, you want to rebuke that dream. You want to denounce that dream and cancel any covenants you have made unknowingly in that dream. So whoever is appearing to you in that dream, trying to give you food, something to drink, or even trying to have sex with you. These are spirit spouses, but they're masquerading as familiar spirits in the dream. So put a one in the chat if you guys understand the assignment. So a lot of times, if you guys are not living right with God and you made a covenant or a pact with, an, with a devil or unclean spirit, this spirit will masquerade as a family member. That's why sometimes when you have dreams about family members, that's not your family members. Test every spirit. Like um, the, the Bible says in 1 John chapter 4, it says test every spirit to see if it's from God or not. Now, Spirit spouses like succubus, incubus spirits, marine spirits. These spirits will have sex with you in your dreams to, in order to make covenants with you. So let's say you went to a psychic medium. You open the door to that spirit by interacting or entertaining that psychic medium. When you went to get your, get your palms read, you did a tarot card reading, you went and got a soul reading, something of that sort. Well, guess what? You just opened the door to a spirit spouse. So now, the, it might not happen right away, but once you open that door and you don't renounce that, guess what? Now you have a spirit spouse and they start to come to you in the dreams. So how do you test the spirit? You, have this, you test the spirit by the word of God. You test the spirit by having the Holy Spirit. See, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of discernment. You want true discernment? You have a relationship with God. You cannot know another spirit unless you have the word of God in you. And you can't know who's of God and who's not if you don't have a relationship with God. See, it's like, for instance, if, if you don't have a relationship with God, you want to know how God is and how he operates, how he thinks, how his feeling, how, how does he feel to you? His presence. See, I know the Holy Spirit. I know his presence. I know how he thinks. I know how he operates with me. I can't speak for nobody else, but I'm talking about for me. I know how he speaks to me. So when I see other spirits interacting with me, I always ask the question, Jesus, is that you? And if, if the Holy Spirit responds to say, Neil, that's not me. That's a counterfeit spirit. I ignore that spirit. And I notice when I ignore that spirit, that spirit will get upset and try to attack me in the dream. Or they try to put me in a sleep paralysis where they could try to attack me while I can't move. So that's how I know if a spirit is of God or not, you don't answer to every spirit that call your name. If a spirit calls your name, let's say if you're drifting off to sleep and the spirit's trying to call your name, you might hear a spirit sound like your ancestors. You might hear a spirit that sounds like a family member because that's how they try to reel you in. They try to sound like something you're familiar with. You get what I'm saying? So when they start to speak to you while you're dozing off, you'll start, you'll start to hear your name being called. Do not answer that. You should, the, the, the right question you should be asking is like, who is this? Reveal yourself in the name of Jesus or Jesus Christ. Is that you? Those are things that I would say. And, and based on that response that I get back, it lets me know if that's God or it's not. You see, if you say the name Jesus, it exposes the demon right away. I'm going to explain that to you. You saying the name Jesus exposes demons. Demons cannot lie when you say the name Jesus. You know why? Because they're forced to tell the truth. They're forced to tell the truth because Jesus Christ is the truth. The Holy Spirit is the truth. Anything that's the opposite of the truth is going to be exposed. 
The devil is a liar. He is a murderer from the beginning. The truth never aborted in him. So the nature of the devil is a lie. Doesn't mean that the devil doesn't know the truth. His nature is not of the truth. So anything that's masquerading as an angel of light, because it says that Satan masquerades as an angel of light. So anything that masquerades as an angel of light or masquerades as quote unquote God, and it doesn't have the fruits of God, doesn't have the characteristics of God, doesn't line up with the scriptures of God, it is not God. And the more you get in tune with God and read your word, that's why it's so important that you read your word. Because the devil knows the word. What do you think he's challenging Jesus with in the wilderness? He wasn't challenging Jesus with swords and armor. He was challenging Jesus with his own word. He said, if you be the son of God, turn these, turn these stones into bread. If you be the son of God, drop yourself off the cliff. The angel is going to pick you up. He was quoting Psalms 91. That's why if you don't know the word, you're going to be deceived. You see it now? So put a one in the chat if you guys understand the assignment. You're going to be deceived because you don't know the word. The devil knows the word. That's why he can manipulate the word. The devil is not a creator. He is a created being. This is what I need you brothers and sisters to understand. These fallen angels, these giants, these Nephilim, these other gods and other religions, they're not the true God. They're not the creator. They are created beings. They are angels that fell from grace. So these angels that fell from grace, they started to inhabit these other nations that were not Israel. So all the nations that were split apart in Genesis 11 at the Tower of Babel when God divided the nations and, and um, confuse the languages So you have, this is where you have different languages Right? That's why it's called the Tower of Babel Babylon's language Different languages Right? So From Genesis 11 The nations were given over To these angels Who rule over these nations So like Philistines The Jebusites The Egyptians That's why you had Egyptian gods Because those were the principalities that govern over that nation because those nations were given over to the enemy and God took Israel at the apple of his eye. He started off with Israel. He started off with Abraham. So what God did in Genesis 11 is very important that you guys understand because we see the completion of that in the book of Acts. The book of Acts showed the completion of the separation to the unification. See what I'm saying? The book of Acts, when people received the Holy Spirit, what did Jesus Christ tell his disciples? Say, go out into the world and preach the gospel. So the reconciliation of the world is the preaching of the gospel. The separation of the world is idolatry. The world was destroyed by a flood because of idolatry and the giants having sex with the, with the, the which was the sons of God. Having sex with the daughters of men, creating hybrids. That's why you had dinosaurs, you had all these weird looking mythology looking creatures, half head, half human, half animal looking creatures. These are where these things come from. So all your mythology and folklore comes from Genesis 6. All your mythologies that you read in other um, cultures, these come from Genesis 6. You feel what I'm saying? So... There's your answer for why God tells you to stay away from worshiping other gods and, and practicing idolatry. So when you go back to the Old Testament with this new knowledge, when God was giving the Israelites these laws not to go after psychics and mediums and spiritualists and all these different things and practicing necromancy, he was protecting them from those fallen angels and giving them worship. They was not supposed to be worshiping those angels. And you guys are worshiping these fallen angels by entertaining ancestor worship, entertaining tarot card readings and all this other new age stuff. You're going to pay for that. I'm telling you that. Because when you make covenants with these spirits, they're not going to be so reluctant to let you go. You're going to have to fight for your life. I'm still fighting. These spirits to this day. It's not a game. I'm telling you guys. So when you playing with these things and you thinking it's a joke. Like oh yeah he's just talking. We're not going to serve your God. That's fine. You don't have to do that. That's your personal choice. 
I'm just here to warn you not to do that. If you choose not to ignore the warnings, that is fine. You ask me if I pray today. My question to you, did you pray today? I mean, that's I mean, you should ask this, you should ask yourself the same question you're asking me. You know, I don't know where you're coming from with that, but I'm here to preach the gospel. Did you pray today, my friend? All right, so let's go to uh Zechariah chapter 10, verse 2. Let's do that, Zechariah. Give me a second. Oh, there we go. Serious show. Verse 2. So it says, For the idols have spoken vanity, and the diviners have seen a lie, and have told false dreams. They comfort in vain. Therefore they went their way as a flock. They were troubled because they were no shepherd. Let me read that one more time. It says, for the idols have spoken vanity and the diviners have seen a lie. So we just talked about divination. So people who are practicing divinations, those who practice readings and astrology, numerology, all of those different things like that, right? And have told false dreams. So anybody's telling you false dreams as they're operating in the spirit of divination. Um, people who do readings. I'm going to block you myself. I don't care if you hide. That's not got nothing to do with me, bro. You know, that ain't got nothing to do with me. If you ain't here to get saved, bro, go, go somewhere with yourself. All right. Uh, so it says, have told false dreams, they comfort in vain. Therefore, they went their way as a flock and they were troubled because they were no shepherd. A lot of people are walking in blindness because there's no shepherd to guide the flock. A lot of you guys are going to fall away because there's no person in Christ that's really guiding you to the truth. Nobody's not sitting down there with, and telling you the honest truth. Everybody's trying to tell you you're a good person. Everybody's trying to tell you what you want to hear. Everybody's telling you what your desires are. Now, I'm in, I'm in the book of Zechariah. I'm in Zechariah chapter 10, verse 2. Right? So, you guys will keep following the, the lust of your flesh. The lust of your flesh is what's going to lead you to hell. The lust of the eye is what's going to lead you astray. The pride of life is what's going to harden your heart against God. So a lot of you guys, because you think you know everything and you come on this chat room, you come on my live and you're trying to debate me on here. I'm not here to debate you. I'm here to teach. If you're not, here to, if you're, if you're not in a teachable spirit, if you don't have a humble spirit, you're not going to receive the message. What's the point? You understand? Go your merry way. Go in peace. You see what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, I'm interested in those who want to be saved. I'm interested in those who want the gospel. And the gospel is going to reach those who have open ears and an open heart. And this is what it comes back to what I was talking about. God has to lead your spirit. He's drawing you to him. What's the point of coming on this chat room? You see, your spirit is drawn to this message. See, when, when God starts to speak and when God starts to move through a person or in a, in a location or a place, demons start to get upset. I noticed that. And I've done a lot of deliverances, so I know what I'm talking about. Demons get irritated at this word because that's the light that exposed the darkness. So people, when they get upset in the chat room, I really don't pay too much attention to it like I used to because I realize like a lot of you guys are manifesting right now. A lot of you guys are manifesting in the chat room. You're manifesting. You're not even realizing that. All this head knowledge ain't getting you nowhere with God. You have a sin problem. The problem is not about what you know or what you don't know. The problem is your heart. If you're dead, you need to become alive. If you're dead spiritually, you need to become alive spiritually. How do you become alive spiritually? Through the word of God. Through the preaching of the gospel. It says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You see what I'm saying? Y'all guys need signs and wonders all the time just to believe. That's because you're dull of hearing and you're hardened of heart. How much signs do you guys need to know if God is real? Look at the skies. Look at what's going on in the world right now. How much signs do you need? In June, you had the forest fires. 
You had all those gnats and bees in New York City. You had all this hurricanes and tornadoes and earthquakes. Come on, people. What more? You had UFOs, which are not UFOs. They're the fallen angels, by the way. All this exposure of different things. Talking about in China, they found 7,000 new islands. Never ex they, they never knew existed. They just said they found 7,000 new islands. And some of those islands have dinosaurs on it, quote unquote. That's what they're saying. And I believe them because they came out with Jurassic Park. Why would they keep coming out with these new Jurassic Park movies over and over if it wasn't true? So they have this technology. They've been had these things. Everything that the government is telling you guys right now that they just finding out, they've been had that stuff. you just now catching on. These guys been had contact with these beings for hundreds of years, if not thousands of years. Who's running your government? You think it's humans running your government? Who allowed you guys to take the jab? And all you guys were acting in fear to go take the... Come on. Wake up before you get chipped up. Because some people already getting chipped up and they willingly taking it. And that's the funny thing about it. A lot of you guys going to take the mark of the beast not because of... Fear, you're going to take it because of convenience. When you realize you can't feed your kids and you can't pay your rent, you're going to take that mark. I'm telling you that right now. And if you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, you will go and do that. Because he said, without me, you can do nothing. Without the Holy Spirit, you can't fight against the devil. You can't resist the devil without the Holy Spirit. You can't resist, the, you can't resist demons without the word of God. That's why when I preach the word of God, that's why I'm getting all the reactions in the chat room. It's just proving itself. Me reading the chapter right now, me talking about Jesus right now is irritating a lot of you guys demons in the chat room. That just proves my point that without God, you can't do nothing. You can't overcome sin on your own. You can't even, you can't even stop sinning on your own. That's why a lot of you guys are going to go back to the law. The law did not save. It only pointed to you that you need a savior. The laws of Moses didn't save you. It's Jesus Christ who saved you. The laws of Moses only point to you that you need a savior because you are a sinful person. Your nature is of sin. It says God neither tempts with evil nor is he tempted with any evil. It says man is enticed by his own what? Desires of his heart. So the evil that's in this world that you guys like to blame God about. Oh, if, if God was real, why would he allow kids to die? If, if why would he allow killings and murderings? The same, why he, the same reason why he's allowing you to live this long. It's called grace. God is no respect of any person. He's giving you free will just as much as he's giving the angels that rebelled against him free will too. But you see, all of that's going to come to an end. See, when he comes back, all of that's going to end. So while you still have mercy and have grace to repent, you better repent. That's, that's a warning. That's a warning. You can say whatever you want. Sound like a bully to me. Well, guess what? You better, you better take that, you better take that um, opportunity to repent, bro. Because it doesn't matter how it sounds. It matters what it is. It's the truth. He's coming back for a church without spot and wrinkle. He's going to separate the wheat from the shaft. He's going to separate the sheep from the goats. If you're a goat, you're going to go down in the pit. So get your life in order, brother. It doesn't matter what you feel and what you think. It doesn't matter what I think or what I feel. It matters what the word says. Get your house in order. If he was such a bully, he wouldn't give you this, this time to get your house in order. The devil and his angels, hell was created for the devil and his angels. It was never created for humans. That's what you don't understand. And if you don't understand, I'm going to help you to understand. Simple as that. Read this Bible. Read this Bible. Hell was created for Satan and his angels because they rebelled against God. God did not give salvation to fallen angels. He only gave salvation to humans. Why did he give salvation to humans? Because they were in ignorance. They didn't know the truth. That's why... God warned Adam and Eve not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is not the tree of, tree of life. It's the tree of death. God didn't want Adam and Eve to eat from them because they would experience death. Makes sense? So that was Satan's tree. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Look at who tempted who. 
The devil tempted Eve and said, hey, you will not surely die. You will be like gods. And this is what we're going through all this time. We keep going through this for generation after generation, eon after eon, millennial after millennial. When are you going to wake up from this sleep? When are you going to wake up? You're not God. You're still buying into the lie that you're your own God. You don't need God and you didn't get it yet. He said, abide in me and I in you. Without me, you can do nothing. Who's the tree of life in the garden? Jesus Christ. Without Christ, you have no life. That's why you're dead in your sins. Why do you think Jesus Christ had to come back and die for your sins? To give you life that you didn't have. To give you a fighting chance that you didn't have. You was born in sin. You were doomed from the start. Just to help you out for you atheists in the back. You were doomed to die from the start. Jesus Christ gave you an opportunity to have life. Why would you reject your only opportunity out? That's like you being in jail and you get your jail, get out of jail free card, but you're gonna throw it away because you're like, I don't want to do, I don't want, I don't want you to give me that opportunity. You're a fool. And I pity you. I'll still pray for you, and I pray that God will open your eyes and open your ears. You know, in your heart before it's too late. But I'm not going to force the gospel down your throat. I'm going to preach it and keep preaching it until, until he gets me out of here. But if you're, if you're too dull of hearing and too hardened of heart to receive this message, then this message is not for you and keep it pushing. I know why you're still watching my life. You mad and upset. I'm not here to, I'm not here to agree with you. And that's why I need you to understand. So... Let's bow our heads and pray. Father God, thank you for allowing me to come and congregate with my brothers and sisters this morning. I pray that you open their ears and open their hearts to receive this truth this morning. Father God, I pray that you help those who are in the chat room understand their visions and dreams. Father God, I pray that you will guide them and lead them into all the truth. I decree and declare it in Jesus' name. Amen. Put an amen in the chat room, brothers and sisters. We're going to wrap this um, video up. And if you guys have any questions, you can leave it in the chat room. I'll start answering questions right now. So you guys can put your questions in the chat room. <clears throat> I'm a little bit under the weather right now. Sorry about that. But if you got any questions, we're going to talk. Said, said, this young man didn't have anyone to teach him that Jesus is not real. Tom Davidson, why are you not showing your face? I think you're a robot. About to get blocked, my dude. I don't talk to people who don't have their profile pic. You got a lot of words, man. You said, how often do you go live? I go whenever the Lord tells me to come on here. I don't, I don't have a set schedule. So you catch me, you catch me. If you don't, you don't. But if anything, add me as a friend on here. So that way, when I do do lives, I do upload the snippets. And also, if you miss the lives, I want to say this to all you guys, not just you. Add me on YouTube at Neil Aubrey Teller. So when I'm finished with doing this live, I'm going to upload this later on on YouTube. So for whoever came in the chat room late, you guys could check the replay on YouTube at Neil Aubrey Teller. Add me also on Instagram because sometimes they be acting up and kicking me off of TikTok. So I usually do my lives on TikTok or Instagram. So add me on Instagram at Neil Aubrey Teller as well. It's the same title as the TikTok name. So what's my favorite scripture? Romans chapter 8. And we could go there real quick and read that. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation of them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So that's my favorite chapter and favorite verse. Because once you know that you're saved and you have the Holy Spirit, the enemy is always going to try to sow condemnation into your mind. And try to sow doubt and unbelief in your heart to make you feel like you're not saved. The simple fact that the enemy is trying to do all of that to try to throw you off. That should give you a clue that you are saved. Because the devil's not going to attack the people who are already in the world. Why, why would the devil attack those who are his? They're already blinded. It says the God of the world, which is Satan, blinds the minds of the unbelievers. He's not going to attack unbelievers. He's going to use unbelievers to attack believers. I hope y'all seeing it. 
The devil is not going to attack unbelievers. He's going to use unbelievers to attack believers. Which some of you guys are doing already in the chat room. So you're already doing your will of your father, the devil. And then you want to come on here and say, hey, we're a child of God. No, you're not. You do the will of your father, the devil. I do the will of my father in heaven. We're not the same. We might look the same, but we're not the same. You see, the wheats and the tares might look identical. But when the, when the harvest arrives, God's going to separate the wheats from the tares. The children of God from the children of the evil one. So as human beings, we might look identical we might look similar, we might bleed, we might talk the same, but at the end of the day, what's on the inside is not the same. What's on the inside of me is not the same that's on the inside of you. And how do I know? That is based on your response. If you irritated at my presence, I'm a dead man. It is Christ that lives in me. There's no more I that live it, but Christ that live it in me. You're irritated at the presence of Christ. You're not irritated at me. You don't know me personally. I don't know, you probably bump heads on me in the street and I'll keep it pushing, you keep it pushing. But why are you irritated? Why are you irritated? I'm going to keep pushing this in your face until you face yourself. I'm doing you a favor. I'm going to push this in your face till you figure it out. Why are you so mad? If it wasn't the truth, my friend, why are you upset? People only get upset at the truth. They don't get a set of the lie. People love lies as much as they say they love the Oh, I don't love you lying to me. Then why you keep going after narcissists? Why you keep dating narcissists? Why you keep chasing after people who's just pimping you out? People who are just using and abusing you. How much how much relationships have you been in already and you haven't figured that out yet? Come on, people. Y'all love to get abused. Y'all love to get hurt. And let's be honest, that's the human nature. Myself included. I'm not discarding myself from this conversation. I'm in it with you guys. But this is where the difference comes. I, at least I acknowledge that without God, I'm incapable of following God. Let me say that one more time. I think y'all missed that. Without God's intervention in my life, without the Holy Spirit drawing me to him, I will automatically go to the world. I will automatically run towards sin because that is the nature of the flesh. Let's read Romans chapter 8, like my favorite verse again. Let's read verse 7 and verse 8. It says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, the carnal mind is the flesh. It says, the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. So then, that are in the flesh cannot please God. It can't, you cannot please God if you're operating in your flesh. He says, in order to please God, you had to have faith. Now, what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. So, without faith, it's impossible to please God. If you don't have faith, you cannot please God. You can't please God with keeping the laws of Moses. You can't please God by trying to be a good mother, a good dad, or whoever you think you are. You can't please God based on your good efforts. You can only please God through the faith and obedience to God. And that's being led by his spirit. If you're not being led by his spirit, you're none of his. You cannot please God. So you even need God's spirit to even please him. For you to even turn away from sin, you need God's intervention. Why do you think he sent his only begotten son? You don't think he knew the answer already? He said, Father, take this cup away from me. He said, but let thy will be done. Because he knew there was no other way. Jesus Christ said, I am the truth, the way and the life. He didn't say, I'm, I just know some truth. He said, I am the truth. Buddha ain't said that. Muhammad ain't say that. Allah ain't say that. None of your false gods that y'all worship in secret ain't say that. Jesus Christ said that with authority and boldness. I'm going to take that man's word over any one of y'all guys' words right now. He's the only person who raised from the dead. Tell me if Muhammad raised from the dead. Tell me if um, Krishna raised from the dead. Tell me if you, you guys who was in the Rastafarianism, um, Haley Selassie, he ain't raised from the dead. He ain't the Messiah neither. And the funny thing about it, for you guys who's into the Rastafarianism, guess what? Haley Selassie was a Christian. Just to, just to put it out there. Y'all worshiping this guy like he's God, but he's saying he's not God. He's pointing you to Jesus. 
this is food for thought for all my reggae artist people out there. Because a lot of people be thinking I'm Rastafari and I'm not. I might look the part, but I'm not it. So I'm just letting you know, there's only one truth. There's only one way. There's only one life. He said, I am the resurrection. I am the resurrection. So when Jesus Christ comes back, that's when the rapture is going to happen. That's when the resurrection is going to happen. Because the people who are dead in Christ are going to raise from their graves. Just like in Matthew chapter 27, verses 51 to 54. You should study that as your homework. He said, stay in your word. I'll be praying for strength and guidance for you. I thank you, sister. I appreciate it. He said, the dead in Christ shall raise. Amen, sister. Give me a second. He said, find the root of what's making you fall and cut it out. Amen. I appreciate that comment. You said, what can I do? I keep believing, but I keep falling. Well, it's not up to you to stop sinning. It's up to Christ in you to give you the desires to stop sinning. So put a one in the chat. Manny, if you receive the assignment, you can't stop sinning on your own. You might have the desire to not want to sin anymore. And that's a beautiful thing. Because that lets you know that God is working on you. He is working on your heart. If you have the desire to turn away from your old lifestyle, that means that God is working on your heart. But if you don't have no desire to turn away from your wickedness, that means God is not talking to you. It's God is working in us. When he tells us to work out our salvation, it's because he's working in us the desire to change. He's working in us the desire to walk in his commandments. That's why he says, if you love me, listen to what he said. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. A lot of you people who are in the Hebrew Israelite movement, y'all be like, oh, y'all got to keep the law. How are you keeping the law without the spirit? Make it make sense. Let's go back to Romans chapter eight, verse eight. So then that are in the flesh cannot please God because the carnal mind is empty against God for it is not subject to the law of God. Neither indeed can it be. So for you to even do God's will, for you to even be obedient to God, for you to even be obedient to God, you need his spirit. You are not obedient. We are rebellious by nature. That's why it says your father, the devil, and the will of your father, the devil, you would do because your flesh belongs to the devil. It's corrupted. It's sin nature. You feel what I'm saying? I'm just going to keep it real with y'all. I'm going to keep pointing you to Christ. If you... Every time y'all pointing to me, I'm going to point you back to Christ. Oh, you ain't doing that right. Oh, well, guess what? I could never do anything right anyway. <laughs> I was a failure from the start. It's God that put that light in me to be a light to you guys in the world. He's called me to be a soul. If, if God wasn't in my life, I wouldn't even be on here preaching this. Be honest with you, it's God that got me preaching this. If it, if it, was, if it was up to me, I would have still been practicing the occult. I would have still been fornicating. I would have been up in y'all women's DMs sending y'all a whole bunch of stuff. But I'm not in that mindset nor in that lifestyle because God has saved me from that. I fight with my flesh every single day, brother. I fight with my flesh every day, sister. I fight with the evil thoughts in my heart and my mind every day. I know that there's thoughts that are not of mine, which is God's. And he's working that in my heart every day to do the right thing. Even when my flesh don't want to do the right thing. Read Romans chapter 7. That's your homework. I'm not going to go through that whole thing, but read Romans chapter 7. Paul explains that perfectly. He says, every time that I try to do right by God, evil is there present with me. And the things that I want to do, I cannot do. And the things I don't want to do, that I do. That is the dilemma of every Christian on here who has the Holy Spirit and struggle with their flesh. I'm not coming on here to be holy and thou. I'm not coming on here to be your pastor because I'm not your pastor. You, are, you already have one spiritual father, and that's Jesus Christ. You guys are called another man spiritual dad. You only got your dad who you came out of your flesh. With, when you came out of your mom's womb, that's your physical dad. And then you got your spiritual dad who is Jesus Christ. I'm not your dad. I know you may have daddy issues. I get it. We all do. But I'm not your dad. I'm going to point you to dad. It says when your father and mother is forsaking you, the Lord will take you in. Listen to that one more time. When your mother and father forsake you, then the Lord will take you in. If your mother and if you didn't have a good relationship with your moms and dad, guess what? 
That's okay. We all been in that same, I've been in the same boat too. Guess what? But I go to my heavenly dad. Whatever my physical dad couldn't do for me in this world, my heavenly father does for me. And how do I know? Because he put me through the test. When I moved out of my family's house at the age of 26 and I lived on my own, I had to learn to survive on my own in the ghetto. I had to learn to pay rent, pay bills, fight, do what I had to do. And that was by the grace of God. God was protecting me. So God took me away from my family to show me that, yo, I'm in control. Not none of these people. You were sheltered by the illusion. You were sheltered by the illusion. Now I'm bringing you into the reality. I pay your rent. I pay your bills. I gave you this job. I gave you this home. I gave you your wife that you have right now. I gave you this life that you have right now. And I could take it away like that. But some of you guys in the chat room, oh, he's mean. No, you don't understand the God that you serve. That's the difference. You, you, you're more accustomed to what people have to say about you versus what God has to say about you. But what did God have to say about you? He said it right there in his word. He said, I knew of you before you were formed in your mother's womb. So before your dad and your moms even knew who you were, God already knew who you were. So who am I going to take the opinion of? Who am I going to take the, uh, the, 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 the validation from? I'm going to take that validation from God. I'm not taking man's validation. I'm taking God's validation. He knew of me before I was even formed in my mother's womb. Some of you guys wasn't even thought of. Some of you guys probably wasn't even a, a, a planned pregnancy. Some of you guys was like, your parents like, did you, did you really want me? They're like, no. We didn't even, we didn't even plan it. We was trying to use the car and just broke. I'm just being real with y'all. So, but you would think that you was a mistake all your life. The enemy would have you thinking that you was a mistake all your life. But God's like, I don't make mistakes. So I'm talking to somebody in the chat room who feel like they're a mistake. No, you're not. Because I've been in the same shoes as you. For years, I always thought that I was different, felt different, didn't fit in with my family. But God's like, no, I don't make mistakes. I do not make mistakes. So that's the God I serve. A God that does not make mistakes. A God that I serve is a God that knew me before my moms even thought of me. Right? So at the end of the day, that's where my confidence come from. It doesn't come from the world. It doesn't come from men's opinions and accolades. None of that. So I hope this message has been a blessing to you, brothers and sisters. I pray that the spirit is opening up your heart and your ears to receiving this gospel. I, I pray that he continues to guide and lead you to the truth. I'm just a pit stop. I'm not the, I'm not the answer. I, I'm just a pit stop along the way on your journey. I'm just pointing you to the next stop. This is the next stop for a lot of you guys. You need to pick up your Bible. Stop coming on TikTok all the time to get a word from us. We're not God. That's what I'm trying to let y'all know in so many words. We're not God. You know? So pick up this word. Read the scriptures. Get to know God for yourself. So that way somebody trying to pimp you or manipulate you out here with the gospel. Talking about God said this and God told me this. You would know like, nah, I know my father. He ain't said none of that to me. But y'all don't know God for yourself, and that's why y'all being bamboozled all the time. I'm just real enough to tell you the truth. I know it might offend some of you guys in the chat room, but I'm just being real with y'all. Like, y'all need to stop looking for affirmation and constant gratification for your flesh. You can never satisfy your flesh. No matter how much sex you have. You gonna still want more sex. No matter how much food you eat, you gonna still want more food. No matter how much weed I smoke. When I used to smoke weed, I still wanted to smoke another blunt. It never was satisfactory. This satisfied my soul. Because the only person that can fill that void is Jesus Christ. So, you guys can check me out on YouTube at Neil Aubrey Teller. Add me as a friend over there and check out the live videos that I did previously. So you guys can catch up with the lives. And also, I'm going to upload this live when I get a chance. Also, check out my prayer album. I have a prayer recordings on here on TikTok so you guys could go through the playlist. I have audio books and prayer recordings, all right? 
Also, you can check that out on SoundCloud at Footwork Ministries Podcast. If you guys are struggling with any type of deliverances, spiritual warfare, witchcraft attacks, all of that, I have prayers for that. It's recorded so you can play that at night. So if you're feeling attacked, just play it at a low volume. Just put it on repeat and watch watch miracles happen. Feel what I'm saying? Um, look look at uh, my website at www.footworkministries.com. You can find the website on my my actual bio description where you go to the TikTok page, right? I've written nine books. They're all free to read and download. It's based on my testimonials, my near-death experiences, visions, and revelations that I received from God, all right? So you want you guys want to check that out. If you're feeling led by the Holy Spirit to support this ministry, you can support this ministry by going to www.footworkministries.com. Go to contact information. All of that stuff is there for you guys, for those who are feeling led to support this ministry, all right? But I, I wish you brothers the best. I wish you sisters the best. And continue to allow God to guide you into all the truth. All right? Catch you guys in the next video. Peace.